Awesome. Hey there, welcome to the Working Actor on Casting Workbook. Thanks for making time to join us again for another incredible interview with actors all over the world who are honestly putting their footprint and making uh making themselves known in the acting industry. And uh, I was just talking offline right now with Vaughn Murray, who I just saw before I changed my mind, which is a great coming of age story that takes place in Edmonton, Alberta. And the story is so relatable for anyone watching it. It's touching, it's heartfelt, and it's eye-opening as well. And it'll take you back to the eighties. So um, welcome to Casting Workbooks, The Working Actor, and welcome Vaughn Murray to our show, Thanks for making time to be with us. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here today. I'm so happy you're here with us. Um, I love this film, as I, I told you. And, um, you know, it brought me back to my days in high school. And, you know, it's hard being the new kid in school. But the premise of this film is about someone who starts off in a new city, in a new school, trying to make friends. And you got, you're bringing back to all those insecurities that we all felt. Tell me what it was about the script that you loved most. I think what immediately stuck out to me was Robin as a queer non-binary character, but the story didn't exactly center around that. It right. centered around identity and growing up and coming of age. And I feel like a lot of queer stories sort of center around that queer experience, which is important. But it's also important to have stories where we can just exist as like, you know, regular people who go through, you know, normal struggles that everyone goes through. Yeah. So that immediately stuck out to me. Um, just kind of seeing this non-binary character who didn't really have the language to identify that kind of go through life and go through experiences that we all go through. So that was immediately caught my eye. Yeah. And in fact, in the entire film, we never really know what your no. identity is, but we don't really need to, which I thought was great. Hey, what are you? you like a school? What's wrong with you? Basically the premise is, while other students wonder if new kid Robin is a boy or a girl, Robin forges a complicated bond with the school bully, making some dangerous choices to fit in. So let's go back to when you first got this script. What was your reaction? Uh, I was... I was really excited. I, I did the audition first, which by the way, happened during like when COVID was a thing, the whole audition process. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of self tapes and a lot of Zoom calls. But initially uh, I got the script after I had been told I got the role and I read the full thing. And I was like, this is like a really interesting story. I think when I'm auditioning, I, I love to I love to find stories that I personally would love to be a part of telling. So this was a story that really stuck out to me. And um, I was just so excited to be a part of it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, and critics have loved it. Anyone who has mm -hmm. seen it has written some great positive reviews. It's your breakout performance. This is your first lead role in a film? Because you could have yes. me. Anyone who watches this film, Before I Change My Mind, which is available now, you can stream it on Prime and Apple TV, you will not think that this is your first lead film. So this is your breakout performance. Um, it's directed by Trevor Anderson. Anderson. It's turned heads with its script. It was featured on the Glad list of Sundance in 2020, and your performance has won over audiences. So tell me a little bit about your background in acting and when you started. Uh, I started around four or five years ago like 2018 2019 originally it started off as like hey like I might want to get into modeling or some kind of like something that involves being on screen because it's something that I always enjoyed and then I was asked the question well you want to do modeling or you want to do acting and I was like let's try acting and yeah. then I just kind of got into it and I was like this is something I really enjoy I think being able to play a character and being able to tell stories, like that's always something that I've enjoyed personally and always something that I've wanted to be a part of. So uh, it's it's a very, it's it's something that I couldn't picture myself not doing. Right. You could do both, you know, you could act and model, mm -hmm. right? You can do those. Yeah. <laughs> so when you decided that you wanted to pursue this as a career, what were some of the steps that you took in order to be successful at it? Originally, it was like, 
just kind of auditioning, figuring out what works and what doesn't. And uh, I find if, if you have a natural instinct, it's it's best not to 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 get rid of that through like extension coaching, but doing like classes and stuff like that, like improv and stuff. So it was a lot of that and sort of like getting rid of that stage fright or like that discomfort of like being and performing in front of people. Um, but mostly it was just kind of like auditioning and just seeing where that took me. And eventually it led me here. So absolutely. It led you here. What are some tips that you, I mean, when you walk into the audition room, obviously everybody kind of, you know, has those mm -hmm. jitters and they're nervous and stuff like that. What was your first impression when you auditioned for the first time? Oh, it was so terrifying. <laughs> I think, I think the biggest thing is, I mean, before everything was mostly like tapes and stuff, you go into the room and I think the scariest part was just kind of having them watch you. You know what I mean? And, and that it's, it's usually a pretty intimate, there's only usually like three or four people in the audition room. In my experience, that can be really scary. I mean, like you can be in front of a director or like the casting people and it's like, you just, you want to prove to them that like, you're good enough. I think the biggest thing for me was just, just have a conversation with them beforehand and yeah. get yourself acquainted with them. And that really helps, I think, your comfort levels. Cause then you realize they're not like monsters. They're just people. Yeah. So I had read an article where Trevor said, when they found Vaughn, they knew that you would Robin. So what was it about your audition that convinced them that you are Robin? I'm I'm not too sure. I think I think the biggest thing was um, when I met Trevor for the first time. We were wearing very similar outfits. I think uh, Trevor has said time and time again that this originally started as kind of like a biography and then like an autobiography and then it became like a story of its own. But Robin was like originally kind of a character that was sort of an extension of himself before, yeah. you know, things sort of developed. Um, so I think the fact that we were we were both very similar people. I mean, we walked in wearing the same hat the first time we ever met. That was really funny. And um, yeah, like we are very similar people. I think we just resonated very well. And, and our outlook and understanding of this character was very similar. And I think we just kind of, that understanding, I think really helped us connect. Did you have any input on how Robin, you know, should be in the film, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So tell us. Yeah. What, I, what I think okay. what I loved about working with Trevor was it was a, it was very much um, a go with the flow type of thing where it was like, we'd sort of discover pieces of Robin as we filmed and as we went on. And he was always open to new ideas or new suggestions and, figuring out what worked and what didn't. Uh, the biggest moment for me was originally, there's this moment in the movie where uh, Robin is supposed to kiss someone. Mm -hmm. um, and later on, she uh, it's Izzy. She goes, tell, she goes to tell Carter that um, she kissed Robin and it sort of creates this huge drama. Originally the kiss was supposed to happen, but then we thought, what if Robin denies is you that kiss that creates a whole new dimension to right. all of those characters and a lot of changes like that happened and I think that that was one of my favorite process of, processes of filming was just discovering all these pieces as we went along. It's time to assign band buddies for the trip. Put me with Carter. Me? No way. You're scared. I'll go. When you first saw the film when it was done, did you see it in the theater? Did you see it before it was released? And what was the reaction when you saw yourself on screen? I saw it in the theater first. Mm -hmm. With and an audience. With an audience, so I got to see the whole reaction to it. And it was like, watching me on screen was like weird at first. Cause it was like, that's me. Like my face is on screen in front of all these people. That's so weird. Yeah. But then, I think as I continue to watch it, it's sort of easier to differentiate yourself from the character. So you kind of get used to it. But initially, like, it's kind of like a shock because it's like you remember doing all of this stuff and you remember all of this filming. So it's sort of like, you know, when you watch like a home project that you make with like friends or something on video, it sort of felt like that. It was like, I remember doing all of this. Now it's come together into this film and it's, you feel proud. 
you feel strange, Mm -hmm. you feel good, but eventually you're just like, yeah, we did that. Yeah. You guys did that and you did it so well because like I said, so many people who have watched it just love it. They walk away and it's like an eye opener and they're feeling good about it. And they're saying it's a, a film that everyone must see. So now that you've got this under your belt, what's, what are roles that you want to continue to pursue? I would love to see a non-binary action hero, like a non-binary John Wick would be super cool to me. I, I love the matrix and i love john wick specifically keanu reeves is one of my favorite actors but i love those kinds of like yeah canadian as well (laughs) i think think we used to have the same agent as well which is pretty cool um but just those like sort of action films that are like super cinematic and stuff to have like to be like a non-binary character in one of those films would be super awesome yeah. So in what ways do you think that the industry is progressing in terms of representation for the LGBTQ plus community? Actually, I think about this a lot. And I think the biggest thing for me is um, I've been watching a lot of movies with my mom, both older and new. And the biggest thing that I'm noticing is the shift in stereotypes mm-hmm. when it comes to queer people. I feel like when queer people were rarely shown in film before it was often through comedy or like stereotypes so like your gay best friend or the woman who seduces the guy and oh no it turns out she has a penis like and it's sort of like this big reveal and it's played off as a comedy that's not something that's ever really sat well with me so the fact that we're really moving away from that and we're creating like these human characters like robin who are people and you know it, it humanizes my community and it lets people know that we're not just like a joke or like something that you can use in film we're like real people so that's mm-hmm. something that I think we're definitely progressing in and I love to see that so yeah absolutely and uh, you know I was just attending um, an LGBTQ plus award show in Los Angeles where they were honoring so many actors who were just doing so much in the community and in the acting community uh, you know like Matt Bomer and Ricky Martin et cetera, et cetera. so who are some creatives that inspire you uh, I think the biggest, most obvious one for me, I've said this a lot, is Elliot Page, 100%. I mean, he's done a lot for the community. And I remember watching his character come out in Umbrella Academy. And I was like, it was so natural. And I was like, you don't ever really see that that often in just like a, a show like this specifically. You know what I mean? And that made me really happy. Uh, acting wise, I'm really inspired by Timothy Chalamet. He has this very like natural kind of acting and I take a lot of inspiration from his characters when I'm doing like auditions and stuff like that so those are the the two that really come to mind and obviously Keanu Reeves and Keanu Reeves of course yeah two things that you mentioned in there is you take inspiration from uh, Timothy when you do your auditions in what way so how do you study him what is it that stands out about his acting that helps you I think it's specifically some of the characters that he plays. Um, I can't remember the character's name, but he plays someone in Don't Look Up, who's like this very sort of like do bro, like chill kind of guy. I did an audition a little while back where it kind of had that same vibe. So I sort of studied how he did that, tried to add my own spin onto it, but it's sort of like the character archetype is there and you're like, oh, so that's kind of how you do it. Uh Uh-huh. That's pretty good insight because anybody watching right now will be like, oh, okay. So you just look at your inspiration, you study how they mm-hmm. go about it and you adapt it to what you want to do. Um, you also said that you had the same agent as Keanu Reeves. How did you get an agent like that? Uh, it was mostly like just kind of audition process. Uh, I remember like we were searching for an agent and we went through like a few interviews with a bunch of different people who were all very awesome. And I think we met with Daniel I did an audition and he was like, yeah, you're great. Um, and I was like, great. And I, I think I, I resonated with him the most uh, because he's um, uh, he's a really good agent. You know, he's like, he lets you know the truth and he tells you, you know, he tells, he tells it to you straight kind of guy, but he's also very kind and he's also... Yeah, he's just a wonderful guy. He resonated with me instantly. So yeah, you, but you make it sound so easy because not everybody can get <laughs> Keanu Reeves' agent. That's why I'm asking you like, what steps you take in to order explain. to get. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, you're 18 and you've been doing this for mm-hmm. four or five years. So you started off young and you like you hit the ball, like you just hit the ground running with roles and this mm-hmm. is your first feature and so many more to come. So what advice would you give to anybody who wants to start off at the age you did and 
things to keep in mind? Well, I've been very lucky so far. I 100% have to acknowledge that. Um, personally, specifically, like, I got into acting, not just because I love it, but also because I never got to see non-binary people, like, on, like, growing up on TV, like, accurate representations. Um, and I wanted to be that representation that I saw was kind of lacking. So I think specifically for young people and young queer people, mm -hmm. find your motivation. You know what I mean? If you truly love acting, then pursue it. And, you know, don't let anyone take away your truth. Don't let anyone take away your identity. Always be true to that specifically. It's very important. Um, and yeah, I, I think pursuing what you love is very important to be passionate about it and to not give up on yourself is it's a little bit cheesy but that's that's what I believe so no it's great advice and what I'm loving um is when I interview a lot of people who are from um who are non-binary or from the LGBTQ plus community they're just saying you know it never was a concern for them to talk about their gender mm -hmm. but when I used to interview people it was like oh no you know I didn't really want to come out because I wasn't sure how I was going to be perceived etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's very refreshing to hear you say that you know you you fine with it you came out and you talked about it and you want to be that representation for people yeah I mean uh there's always going to be people who will disagree with you there's always going to be people who won't support you. There'll be people who will support you, but will sometimes have the flub up with the pronouns and stuff like that. The important thing is, is that you know who you are. And as long as you know who you are and you're proud of who you are, you'll make it through. I love that. Okay, so where can we see you next? I am going to keep a little quiet about oh, that. Come I'm on. definitely auditioning, but I can't give away too much. Um, I'm... 100% open for auditions, but uh, I will keep your eyes peeled, is all I'll say. Okay. Is it going to be a <laughs> non-binary Marvel character? <laughs> Hopefully, who knows? <laughs> or John Wick, we'll keep an eye on that. Or John Wick, who or knows? John Wick. <laughs> all right, uh, this has been a great conversation with so Vaughn Murray. Um, you can see Before I Change My Mind, now streaming on Apple TV, Prime Video, see it this summer with your friends. It really is a touching and really eye-opening uh, coming of age story that everyone needs to see. Thank you so much, Vaughn, for making time for us. Thank you so much. I had a really good time.